uh, doing a mental health ramble here today. And if you follow me on um, Instagram, I put a thing up talking about like um, my troubles I was having back in like eighth, ninth grade. And I, I still have a file from a psychological report. And I said, oh, do you want me to do a video on this? And I think everybody but one person said, yeah. So I found the file in the basement. Got it right here. I figure I talk about what's in it. <clears throat> um, and my own mental health right now. Um, I've been having the, the heartburn, the GERD, stomach problems. I had, I don't know what the fuck it was. I'm assuming it was some kind of terrible heartburn, but it sucked. It was like radiating around my back, my front. So I've been alright with the eating, but I really got to try to do like a strict bland diet um because it's it's not fun but i think that's been affecting my mood and my mental kind of health as well and the days i've been home i seem to be sleeping more like on the nap during the day and stuff which i don't typically do i used to do it a lot in the day so i don't know if that has anything to do with it or just my physical health's been a little shitty, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, but, you know, physical and mental health, once they start combining and bothering you, it could be a problem, I think, both, to, you know. Sometimes when you're feeling shitty physically, it starts to fuck you up mentally. When you're feeling bad mentally, it starts to mess you up physically, you know. Other than that, um, you know, it's been alright, I guess, like I said, I mean, I actually had a couple of weird feelings the other night, I was sitting in bed listening to some music, and, uh, like, out of nowhere, it was just, like, almost like, a, not, like, where am I, but almost like, oh my god, like, am I really here, like, and usually when I get that, I will get a panic attack shortly after, but I've learned over the years to kind of, I kind of like refocus myself, and I usually can avoid that bad feeling. Um, starting to happen, but I was like, oh my god, like you almost like have a weird moment in your mind, like this is real, you know, like it's hard to explain. But anyway, I got this file here. This is written authorization required for release of information, privilege, and confidential. So somebody authorized the release of this. Um, I guess it would have been the school itself. I didn't know I even had this. My aunt was like, oh, I found this. Because she was digging through stuff in the basement. I don't know, it might have been with all the other crap. And like this we had a wall unit in the living room that had like a bunch of stuff like not like this. <laughs> Mental health things, but like doctors, files, and then x-rays and stuff like that. Um, but yes, this happened in... Um, see, this is... So it says here the uh, reason for ref referral was severe attendance problems. I've talked about this in the past, where I like stopped going to school in eighth grade and then eventually kind of got forced back in. And then in ninth grade, I did it again, and then I went to move my dad, and then I did it in Valley Stream as well. And then they started doing this stuff, and I went eventually into the alternative program for 10th grade. But, um, so this would have been referred by my mother. Um, so it's got all this shit here. Um, so the nature and dates of contact, it says here, this is something about the Weschler... I don't know if I'm saying that right. Intelligence scale for children, third edition. Figures, drawings, Cooper Smith, self-esteem inventory, Reynolds adolescent depression scale, the behavioral adjustment scale. Clinical interviews happened on 26th and the 27th of May and the 18th of June. These were all in 94. 
psychiatrist interview was in, on the 1st of 94, which is my birthday, actually, June 1st. <laughs> and the parent interview was the 26th of 94. Um, I couldn't remember. It will say it on the second page, I believe. Um, let's see. It literally is giving you, like, a word-for-word well, word stuff that I've actually talked about. But since here's the background. It talks about the background here. And this is where I live with my mother, grandmother, and aunt. Mom was a cop in the city, Bronx specifically. It says parents divorced six years ago. This would have been 94. They got divorced in 88. Well, they, they separated in 88. They weren't fully divorced in 88. I think they were divorced in like 90. <clears throat> Remember, it was in fourth grade when that happened. Uh, and said at this point, I lived with my dad in Valley Stream, and he was a custodian. I attended Uncle's school for elementary school, and this is, it says, okay, I was mostly a B student with some minor weaknesses in writing and math. I averaged 16 days absent per over the six grades. 26 was a high in fifth. Um, I missed 15 towards the end of the year in seventh grade. I don't remember that either. There is a history of high absenteeism. Now, I know I missed um, five days in the beginning of seventh grade when I cut my foot open. And I was like, I couldn't like walk properly. I could barely do anything with it. Um, I didn't really feel like going from class to class on crutches. Um, <clears throat> um, I don't know what the other ones were at the end. I don't know if maybe that was the beginning of something, but the seventh grade was fine for me. Um, I would take strategic days to not go to school. <laughs> like if there's like a, something you had to do up in front of the classroom and shit. <laughs> Privileged and confidential, Richard Parks. Background continued, blah, blah, blah. His attendance this year is very poor. February, I was not attending at all. I was decided I'd move my dad. Go to school there. The school psychologist there reported that Richard attended maybe a week or two. I Definitely went there longer than that. Maybe it was about three full weeks, and then I started to go half days. Because even then, that high school was 7th to 12th grade. And I guess by 9th, you could leave for lunch. So I would go. My dad's apartment wasn't far from the school, so I would go home. And then I was like, I'm not going back. And then that turned into me not going the full days. I would go out and take like eight-hour walks. I guess that's where my love of walking came from. Um, oh, so that was reported, but he was never able to see me. And then Valley Stream's the one that asked me, Mass, to have a psychiatric evaluation. This part here, I do not remember at all. Um, it was this psychiatric thing was completed at Schneider's Children's Hospital on April 18th. <clears throat> So I went to live with him after the winter break. So that would have been like the end of February, I think. So I definitely did more than three weeks. Or maybe, like I said, I cut down to half. And then I probably was like a week or two where I didn't go at all. Um, and tells you the doctor. I'm not going to say these names. So the results can include mental status evaluation does not suggest any significant degree of depression. Now, this is where they give me something which I didn't. I didn't even realize they'd put this. Like I said, I hadn't seen it. Uh, the, also, the DSM three R diagnosis was separation anxiety disorder. With I didn't like I guess I was like I'm gonna look that up. I was like you know you don't want to be separated from like your parents or your family or something, which I didn't think to be true because I had no problem. You know I would not go to school, but I would take an eight hour walk. This is in Valley Stream. My dad wasn't home anyway. He would have been working. So I would either just go back home. So maybe if you know, like, you know, I'm more comfortable at home type thing. So I didn't really feel like that. Maybe partial just being away from home. Like the house itself. I don't know. There's other times I would just go do stuff. Like I, this wasn't a thing. It was so specific to school. You know. I just couldn't deal with it. Like I've said this in the past, I could have known every single person in the school and it's still I still would have just had that feeling of like dread and everything else. Um, 
blood work and EKG were done. Xanax and Paxil were prescribed to help reduce anxiety. Individual psychotherapy was recommended. As was a consideration of Pin's petition should Richard continue to resist going to school. That's in quotations. I don't know what that is. Pin's petition? Let's see what that is. <laughs> if that's still a thing, I don't know. If any of you have heard of that, or like I said, a lot of this is kind of new to me. When I first saw it, I think it was in the 21, I didn't fully read everything from it. Um, I don't look at this. Pin's petition meaning. No oh, person in need of supervision under a child under 18. It does not attend school or behaves in a way that is dangerous or out of control. Um, I was not out of control. I just didn't, I did avoid school, but I wasn't like going nuts in terms of like causing harm to people, others, or myself. <clears throat> the findings, uh, I came in for the evaluation. Oh, this is, so this would have been in June. Um, unless... I don't know if that was... No, this had to have been done by this psychiatrist at, in Massapequa. It had to have been. I came to the evaluation room without incident. Because I remember doing this in the middle school or junior, the middle school, burner, middle school at doing this. I remember going to like a specific room and this guy came in. Um, I appeared as a dark head, thin, thin youngster. Oh, those were the days, being thin. I was pleasant and cooperative throughout. I was fidgety, hesitant, and generally exhibited an on-guard demeanor. He did not check his answers, tending to have a get-it-over with approach. I do have a problem with that. I, like, go through things. Like, I can't focus on tests like that. I, not a good quality. Um, his, my effect was dull. My effect was dull. Rarely evidencing any emotional reaction. So I was already, I already had robot-type of fucking vibes even then. <laughs> There was a depressive quality to me, even though the other findings said there was uh, no significant degree of depression, but I had those qualities. Poor eye contact, slouch, slouch posture, rumpled clothing, emotional flatness, and monotone voice quality. Oh, ha, ha. Now I'm making YouTube videos and people enjoy my voice. Stick it to you. Um, I do, do the eye contact thing is completely on point. I do still to this day. Like, I'm much better at it, but I do not like people looking at people in the eye for more than a few seconds. I, I just fucking weird. I don't like it. You know, I will sometimes, you know, I probably was like, you know, I was a teenager. I was probably like, oh, I don't want to, you know, look at the floor, you know. I don't know if the rumpled clothing has to do anything. Maybe they just were not, we didn't have a dryer back then, so the clothes might have been out on the line. I don't know. And they weren't. <laughs> They weren't, like, uh, ironed. <laughs> Emotional flatness, I, I, listen, I know I can admit that, like, I give off kind of no emotional things to stuff. Like, sometimes, like, I don't react how a lot of people react to things or how you should. Um, I rarely volunteered any comments unless directly addressed, and then his remarks were generally without elaboration. And I know this because I still do this now. I don't... If I, especially if I don't know people, like, I'm not, I don't like to initiate conversation. I'm much better now at that as well. But back then and for a long time, even still to this day, in, in points, I do not like to initiate conversation. I'd rather be, someone ask me something, and if I'm into the subject, I can then move it along. <laughs> but I guess I wasn't elaborating with these questions. Okay, so the, this intelligence test I mentioned earlier, it was a good deal lower than previous testings in first grade. This is bad. <laughs> My verbal IQ went down 10. Performance went down 32 from 111 to 79. Full scale IQ was 108 and went down to 86. Now, I had taken another IQ test, I think, after this, and it was higher. But So the current f scale fell into a low average rate of the 18th percentile. Verbal IQ was at the 37th from the range. Average range, his performance was at the 8th percentile, at the borderline intellectual range. So this was, um, I think, the first grade ones we're talking about. The discrepancy of 16 points is considered statistically significant. And here's the 
Hunter's findings continued. Um, these are subtest results, uh, verbal subtests. I um, don't see what this actually means. It says it here, but verbal information, eight similarities, 10 arithmetic, 10 vocabulary, nine comprehension, nine performance subtests, picture completion, six coding, four picture arrangement, eight block design, eight object assembly, seven uh, verbal subtest results were very consistent within three scale points, mostly in the average range. The performance subtest results were also highly consistent within three scales in the low average to borderline range, except for his score on the visual motor speed subtest, which was in the mentally deficient range. Oh, man. Get buried here. Um, the writer feels that Richard may be somewhat weaker in visual and visual motor perception functioning as compared with auditory functioning. However, it was comparatively low score in that area, and the extraordinary drop of 32 points in the performance IQ was previously testing. Probably more, they even say this here, it's probably more to emotional factors, such as his lack of, what? Oh, my lack of frustration tolerance, his all-or-nothing approach, apparent, uh, my apparent agitation, and depressed demeanor, then cognitive explanations. So it is getting blamed on things, and I think that's actually kind of true because I do have that if I didn't want to be there and I'm already like back in school talking to something even though I'm not around a bunch of people or anything it's just I'm not there I'm not liking it I don't want to get the hell out of there I wasn't helping myself with that demeanor I could admit that and I remember that day I remember being in that room and I do remember like specifically <laughs> looking at the floor <laughs> um On the projected material, overall performance did not differ from the psychiatric evaluation, behavior adjustment scale, and the Reynolds depression scale. I scored well with the normal ranges, indicating that depression is not behind his lack of attendance. So depression is there, apparently. My demeanor is depressive, but I'm, it's not. Being depressed is not the cause of me missing class, which would be true. On the base, that other test, Richard's overall profile is very stable, free from clinical indicators of maladjustment, with a single exception of the measure of sense of inadequacy, which fell into the at-risk range. So I clearly didn't have, uh, I guess, self-esteem and shit like that. I profess, I've professed to get along well with others. I've played on sports teams and thinks that he's fun to be with. It wasn't being humble there, I guess. Uh, my mom agrees. Social problems are not in the area of concern. I'm not... No, I mean... This is not tight. It should say known. It's not no. It's not known to be odd or unusual. And his thinking process appears to be free of distortion. I was weird when I was younger, so I'm surprised they didn't pick up on any of that. I'm still weird now, but I don't mean like... I don't know. Yeah. Probably coming to, some of that comes across on my videos probably, but, um, uh, responses to other projected materials suggested that although there is a certain amount of underlying anger, I'm basically healthy for a, from a structural psychological point of view. This is weird to me because I don't know, maybe I did see this at some point, or somebody else did, and, uh, <laughs> like you can see here, this is supposed to say psychological, but that w the illogical is uh, s scribbled out, so it just says psycho now. Also here with psychotherapy. The therapy is scratched out. So it just says psycho now. I don't know if the psychiatrist was putting this, which wouldn't make sense. Um, I don't know. Unless I did come across this and I just scribbled it, I don't know. That's a mystery. Okay. Yeah, you see, this is where it says that there's a major problem with separation and individuation. This that's not individualization. Individuation. That's I think that should say individualization. From home is exemplified by his school attendance problems. I described being very anxious when he was forced to go to school. He said that his heart pounds, sweats, and stomach hurts. He said he would do anything not to go. <clears throat> Like most students with this, 
Yeah, every, I'm going to real quickly say every time it's supposed to be psychotherapy or whatever, psychological, the, the only psycho, like the, the therapy is scribbled out. Also, as a family member doing that. But I don't think that would make sense either. Uh, I don't feel guilt and I'm in total denial of the consequences of my re actions with regard to not attending. I said that I don't know why he does not want to go to school. I didn't. I would lose my shit. Like, my mom would be ready to take me to school. Like, you gotta go. And I, cause I would have missed the bus. And I'd be in the driveway, like, flipping out. Like, I can't go. Like, like, it was such a form of dread and fear and just paranoia and everything. Like, I don't know. I still to this day don't know, you know, why truly it was, you know. I was in total denial like I knew bad things could happen if I wasn't going to school and that's part of the reason I went from the second year because the first year that in eighth grade I did the same thing and the people the dean and somebody else came to my house and they're like if you don't go you're going upstate and I was like oh shit and then um I went back so I knew there was consequences for it and in ninth grade I was like oh crap I go with my dad and all this shit and then other stuff happened so I knew stuff would happen uh, the source of my separation anxiety is a matter of psycho for psychotherapy, but based on an interview with my mother, it has a lot. <laughs> Here's where the thing he said that I put on Instagram. So she would he would have talked to my mom before me, like a week before. Based on the interview with my mother, it has a lot to do with living in a house with three adult women. <laughs> I maybe misworded that a little bit from what I was remembering when I put on Instagram, but so they're saying maybe I did because I have women at home. I don't want to be away from them, and then like I don't know if like they're saying the way I am you know, or was was because I was living with all women. I didn't, didn't understand that, but uh, also a matter. Of, oh, you see, the psychotherapy didn't get touched here. That wasn't touched on this word so that whoever did that missed on this one it's my uh, over-reliance on denial manipulation and avoidance to cope with his anxiety <laughs> you know i can say you know avoidance to cope with it definitely i can say that for sure i mean that's not wrong i don't know if i was i didn't denial well no i'm sorry denial and common manipulation so they're saying i'm manipulating situation so I, was, I don't know I don't really manipulate remember manipulate anything I remember just bugging out like at the end of the day if my mom you know wasn't gonna get it done the school certainly wasn't doing anything either that's the thing like usually the school just supersedes even your parents if you're having problems but I ended up not enforcing anything so I guess my power of manipulation was so incredible at age 15 I should have turned it into a career, but uh, <laughs> this is where I just get <laughs> buried. <laughs> All right, summary and recommendations. I'm a youngster of low average academic potential who is not attending school because of the parent separation anxiety problem. This has been a significant drop in his IQ, which probably is both a result of multi emotional factors while taking the test and also a result of being out of school so much and completely disengaged from the educational process for so long. That's actually kind of true, too out of school like I stopped going like I think I was out of ninth grade like April May and June up until 10th grade um you know and obviously my emotions and my anxiety was clearly fucking me up um I'm a youngster of low yeah. I mean man, you know what I guess I didn't light it up and no you know because I in high school I did much better I think I was like ranked 115 out of like 516 kids in 12th grade. They give you, the, for some reason, the school did that. They like tell you where you placed in terms of your grades and shit. It's kind of fucked up. <laughs> At that point, sure, you know, I'm not, I wasn't showing like, oh my God, I'm incredible at stuff. <clears throat> There's no denying the emotional factors involved. The writer, the fucking writer, <laughs> the psychiatrist feels that there is a good deal of manip I can't even say this, I hate this word manipulativeness as well, so that means uh, that that is, there seems to be at least as much school avoidance as there is school phobia although it is nearly impossible to separate the two 
so I did have a phobia school, but I was also trying to avoid it because I was afraid. I don't know. And that's the thing. It's not like I had a hard time in school, you know, with, you know, I, like I said, I got a plum. I was shy, but I would get along with people, you know, I occasionally had problems. You know, people would give me shit here and there, but it was, you know, in eighth grade. No, not even in eighth grade. Was it eighth? I think I had a little bit of shit in eighth grade. I forget what it was. It's like one specific person and just, you know, I don't like confrontation. I remember I tell them to shut up and stuff, but, you know, unless it gets physical, they kind of keep annoying. Eventually it just stopped. The person just stopped doing it. And I think I ended up actually getting along with the person, but in the ninth grade, there was little sp scattered things here and there. But it was never like crazy. I know there's people, you know, who just got s picked on, had so many problems in school just from fucking assholes and shit. It was never like that with me. Like, <clears throat> So it's like I couldn't even fall back on that back then. Back, you know, I can't go because fucking kids are going to fucking beat the shit out of me, you know? Like, I don't... <laughs> I don't know. Um, there is little doubt that I will fail ninth grade and be required to... So he was dead wrong on this. <laughs> there is little doubt. So I guess maybe this is where my manipulation comes in, although there was no manipulation. Little doubt that I will fail ninth grade and be required to repeat. Um... This can have the effect of forcing me to face reality and drop his denial, to harden his resolve not to attend, to increase his anxiety, or some combination. His reaction at the beginning of the year will be critical. I did not repeat. Ninth grade, okay, this is what happened. Now, this is how people like me in general. So maybe I'm not even actually manipulating people, it's just the fact that they talk to me for a little bit and for some reason like me. My dad was a custodian. Uh, this is also because my dad was a custodian at the same school I was going to. And <clears throat> the math teacher in there, I went there for like three weeks, and the math te teacher in there actually gave me a D. So I got credits for math there when I should not have. He gave me credits because he, right out of the gate, too, like the times in there, he liked me. Like, I, you know, we got along, I talked to him, just, you know. I'm not a troublemaker in school, so when teachers, uh, most of the teachers that I had liked me, they, because I, I wasn't, like, looking to raise my hand constantly, but I was never causing problems, I did work and stuff, I was not rude, I was respectful to the teachers and stuff, which can go, you know, which I would assume they appreciate, you know, because teachers gotta deal with fucking punk ass kids every goddamn day, it's gotta be nice to have ones that are at least respectful, um, <clears throat> So I got three credits there, and I doubled up in 10th grade. I didn't have a lunch, I don't think, in 10th grade. Like, I would go out real quickly and grab something and bring it back, or I'd have lunch in the, the fucking alternative program. There was two, one for the girls, one for the boys. I would, I would just eat in there. You know, I, I gotta say, I mean, I'll talk about this after, but I ended up graduating on time. And it was help from that teacher gave me three, uh, that math teacher gave me three <laughs> credits. I think also because he was, you know, him and my dad got along. <clears throat> that probably helped as well, but. Um, writer is hesitant to recommend the, recommend classification as emotionally disturbed at the present time until all our interventions have been attempted. Those include individual and or family psychotherapy, complete adherence to the regimen of anti-anxiety medication, using the PINS petition as leverage, Reducing course loads demand to all C track and carefully monitor progress. So that means I would go down. I think I was in B track. I think it was A, B, C, and then uh, special ed. I don't know if that, they still do it that way, but I was in B, I think, and then they wanted to drop me to C. The alternative program. I don't even know what they would have called that. That was literally, I don't even know. Um, the therapy can be instituted and medication regulated during the summer. It is possible that I can come to grips with some of the separation and issues in time to attend the fall. Careful and moderate. Careful monitoring of this crisis is required. So once again, here, and it's the school psychologist, the writer, even though it said psychiatrist, the psychologist, but that's the end of it. Um, none of this happened. Okay, there was. This is school for you, from my perspective. Nobody followed up on jack shit from Burner. When I got into the alternative program, I was in there, did my thing. I actually had good attendance to it. And I think part of it was 
I flourished in elementary school because it was you know, 30 kids in the one room. I was more focused, and I'd have to go from class to class. Like when you get into seventh grade, some people for sixth, we didn't have sixth, is now in middle school, I believe. It wasn't back then. It was seventh, in mass, people were seventh, eighth, ninth middle school, and then tenth, eleventh, twelfth was high school. Because there's a lot of kids, I guess, and they couldn't fit them in the school. <clears throat> but I always liked the one room thing. That's what the alternative program was. It was one room, and there was other kids in there. Like, I was in there for missing school and not wanting to go and having fucking whatever anxiety they want to call it. Um, other kids in there because they were troublemakers or whatever, and I got along with most of those people too. You know, there's never any issue in there. Um, I was more like social with the people in there and stuff, especially as it went on. And then in 11th grade, I took, a, I've had a few classes out in the regular school and same thing with 12th, but never full again. So I still was able to, you know, handle two or three out, but be in the one room the rest of the time. Um, and, you know, it was, it worked out fine. I mean, I guess, you know, I still made interest. I went to Nassau Community College for a bit too, but you know, I got some credits and shit, but not, I didn't graduate from there. Um, but I always flourish in that more confined setting, tighter setting. And the thing that they say is careful or carefully modern, they modern, modern, Monitored. I hate that word too. I can't. <laughs> there was nothing monitored. All right. They didn't jack shit. I never saw this guy or heard from this guy ever again. I'm pretty sure. I don't even because <laughs> I don't remember talking to anyone leading up into tenth grade, like July, August. It all was happening in June and throughout high school. Like there was no monitoring of anything. I think they were like, okay, he's in this alternative program. Fuck him. You know, he's in there now. He's not, and I wasn't causing problems, so they don't care anymore. I don't remember being on the, the Xanax and the, the Paxil. I was not on that long. I don't remember, right? Because I don't remember being on that in 10th grade. Nobody followed up on that shit either. And this is where I think, like, okay, you know, my mom wasn't pushing on it either, you know, to keep doing it. But once again, everybody sees that I'm fine because I'm now in an environment that I'm doing better in. Um, and it worked. I loved the alternative program, and I was able to do in 11th and 12th a mix of both. You know, I could sit here and be like, you know, if I pushed forward or even pushed harder myself, because ultimately it's going to fall on me, you know. Um, and I can admit, I can manipulate, and I did back then, but not, when it came to not going to school, like, I, especially, like, I did stuff later on in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. But... Like, in 8th and ninth, like, I just was like, oh, God, I can't go. Like, I didn't even know what the answer would be. Like, I was just like, I don't want to go. Like, I'm bugging out and shit. Like, I'm more concerned about just being mellow and shit. I wasn't, like, oh, I was more freaking out. I wasn't, like, sitting here playing a manipulation game. <laughs> there was points in high school where I totally did, but, you know, but, um, I think stuff, stuff in here is absolutely accurate. I'm not going to lie. But some of it's like, yeah, are you going to keep up with it? Are you going to keep up with shit? There's no pins petition. There's none of that shit. None of that whatever the fuck happened. None of it happened. I literally, I got into, maybe if I kept fucking up in 10th, they would have reappeared, but it never happened. So, I don't know. You know, I figured I'd share this with everybody. But yeah, he alluded to like, as I grew up with, I was living with only women that like, maybe that's what caused my separation. Like, I didn't want to be my mother and, and grandma. I don't know if this is where I also gained the power of manipulation or, but I was manipulating them apparently, so I had already become the master so quickly. I don't know. But, you know, this ended up being a pretty long video. But you know what, like I said, I have no problem sharing this with all of you. I honestly don't, you know, and especially because I'm getting bashed in there, you know, not necessarily bashed, the person's giving their opinion their findings, which some of it I don't agree with, some of it I absolutely do, but <clears throat> I don't, I still don't think it was separation anxiety, you know, <clears throat> and this was in 94, 
it was even before that, 93, when I first had the problem, but I ended up going back and getting through the rest of the eighth grade. But, like, in eighth grade, was a, I missed a bunch of time in eighth grade, too. Not as much as ninth, but I didn't get left back there either. Which is weird, so I must have passed all my finals. <clears throat> um, that's just how it was, you know. But like I said, I have no problem sharing. If any of you guys have any similar issues, have anything similar to this in your experiences, you know, let me know in the comments. Or if you uh, follow me on Instagram, you can message me on there too if you want to talk about it or privately or something. You know, like I said, I have no problem sharing, you know, this stuff with anybody. Um, and like I said, I hadn't seen it. I don't remember. So maybe I did see it at some point. I don't know. But anyway, this is a little bit of a mental health update in the beginning there. and just kind of going over this. I'm just going to call it a mental health ramble. Um, I, don't know, I don't know how I'd specifically word a video like that. Uh, but anyway, things are returning sound. 